and welcome to the Poetry Box Live. Okay, and our final feature tonight is Sue Fagalde Lick. Sue is the author of The Widow at the Piano, Poems by a Distracted Catholic. Having escaped the newspaper business in Silicon Valley, Sue Fagalde Lick now lives on the Oregon coast where she writes, does the singer songwriter thing, walks her dog and talks to herself. A native of San Jose who earned a degree in journalism so she could make a living, she earned her MFA in creative writing at Antioch University at the age of 51. She has published her poetry and prose in various literary journals and comes in second to more, came in second in more contests than she can count. Her previous books of prose include Stories Grandmother Never Told, Portuguese Women in California, Childless by Marriage, and Up Beaver Creek. It is my pleasure to welcome Sue fagalde -Lick. Okay, I'm unmuted now. <laughs> uh, this is based on my experiences as a church pianist. And just before this started, I got a text from the person who's playing this afternoon because they're still recording masses to broadcast online. And she has no sheet music. I can't help her. <laughs> so I don't know what's happening right now. God be with her. So I'm going to start with the morning prayer. God, do you see me? I'm the one on the wet deck with a bad case of bedhead, torn red fuzzy slippers, and a bathrobe stained with grapefruit juice. Do you hear me muttering prayers? Praising the new sun, fighting its way through the bully clouds to shine on salmonberry vines about to sprout purple blossoms. Do you find all those please watch overs and please help me as tiresome as hell? Especially when I say them while urging the dog to squat and pee. Do you look down and think, how did creation result in this old woman babbling on the deck? Is that why the clouds are closing in and sprinkling rain upon my head? Dear God, I'm going to shut up now. I know that you know everything. You don't need to hear my prayers. Besides, the dog is standing at the door and my feet are getting wet. Amen. Okay. Some of us can identify here. This is called, So Sorry for Your Loss. I'm the youngest person in the chapel. Not sure how the rosary works or what happens at daily mass. They're waiting in a circle. So quiet, I can hear them breathe. As I sit, someone whispers, so sorry for your loss. I nod, press my lips together. We rise as the priest enters. Dockers, scuffed brown shoes under a starched white vestment. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Readings from the Bible. Prayers for the repose of the soul of my husband's name thunders. I can hear it in their looks. Poor thing, a widow so young. But then the mass goes on. The widower next to me clasps my ringless hand as we stand for the Lord's Prayer, staring at Jesus on the cross. Okay. Well, sometimes this part of Oregon, maybe all of Oregon, is sort of heavily Protestant if they're any kind of faith. And I'm not Protestant. And sometimes it's weird. <laughs> it's called Catholic at the Holy Roller Funeral. Oh God, I'm overdressed. Me and my slacks and sweater set, matching necklace, earrings, watch. Flagrantly Catholic and out of place. Head full of incense and Epcom Spirit 220. Rosary beads still in my purse. But my neighbor died and here I am. Black chairs on concrete floor. Wooden stage up front. No Jesus. Just the giant word redeemed and my chiropractor tuning a red guitar. Video screens project my neighbor's face as a teenager with long black hair, not the gap-toothed blonde I knew. The place is packed with families. I sit in the back on the end, alone. Yes, a Catholic who didn't procreate and didn't bring a husband either. I know they're gonna to try to save my soul. They can see the aching in my heart. But first we sing Amazing Grace with a rocking beat, words on the screen. Folks raise their hands in ecstasy as I clasp my fingers in a tight little knot, mumbling words, looking around. Amen, says my chiropractor. Amen, we pair it back and the pastor. 
35 at most with roll cuff jeans and a scraggly beard I long to trim, preaches the good news, yells it in joy. Gospel quotes projected on the screen. He praises God for taking my friend away to be with him in heaven. Hallelujah. We all shout hallelujah back. Her daughters celebrate her life. They never say she died. They say she transitioned, went to be with the Lord. And she prays for us all to be there too. Now the pastor wants to know who's ready to give their lives to Jesus Christ. People raise their hands. I do, I do. Then the fat guy sitting next to me. I wonder, does being Catholic count? I squeeze my hands so tight they hurt. If Jesus came to my door, I'd say excuse the mess, and he would. He might even share the couch with the pit bull and rub her balding belly as she lies on her back submissive, which I probably ought to do too. But no, I'd be fixing my hair, putting my laundry away, offering him coffee or tea, and wondering if he was really he, or if I just let a bad guy in, someone who would rape, rob, kill, or whip out a Kirby vacuum to sell. But no, the guard dog's upside down, wide open to his blessed hands, and she knows. She knows. Uh, things happen. When you do it year after year, things happen. Just like today, I don't know what they're doing without sheet music. God help them. But, uh, this is the day I blew up the piano. Playing the psalm, I scented smoke. Should I cut off the song and yell fire? You know what they say about false alarms. So I played as the smell grew more intense. Something was definitely burning. It wasn't a candle, I checked. Then the lights on the keyboard went dark, leaving me clacking on plastic while the soloist warbled along. I checked all the wires and buttons, toggled the switch off and on. No resurrection this time. Our beautiful clavinova mute the congregation gathered around, men wiggling wires, pushing buttons as if testosterone would make it work. Then they made the sign of the cross and hauled it out like a coffin with keys. Dusty rug and electric cords, lamp and microphone left behind, and me sitting on my bench bereaved. Was it the songs we played or the shock of my piano socks? Did the holy water short it out? The mass went on. I played guitar. We brought another keyboard in. G above middle C didn't work. The bench was not quite high enough, but it seemed to be okay with God. Ah. Unlucky purple blazer strikes again. Help! My pantyhose are falling down. Under the jacket, under the skirt, under the slip, I can feel the waistband oozing south. Please, God, let it stop at my hip bone. I need just one good upward tug, but I can't in front of the whole damn church. If I just sit, it won't move more. But you know, Catholics, sit, stand, kneel. Okay, reach in, grab some elastic, pull. No, they're still coming down. I have to sneeze. I can't reach my handkerchief, both hands busy with the Lamb of God. Sweet Lord, it's down to my navel now. I'll preach out my gut just to hold it there. I almost overslept today. I thought it was time to change the clock, but no. At 3 a.m. I looked it up, discovered it was 4. Fall back next Saturday, it said. Oh, God, it just slipped below my belly. And now we've got to stand. Let us pray sitting down, for heaven's sake. I reach my hand between skirt and coat, yank it hard this time. I think I pulled my underwear. I need to tie these things around my neck. Father just gave me a look. He knows not what I'm going through here at the grand piano. Jesus never messed with pantyhose, nor did the old male organist. No heels, no hats, no skirts, no slips. Next week, I'm going back to slacks. Quandary. It happens at Saturday Mass. An old lady with chatty Kathy hair suddenly slumps in the communion line. Her husband tries to hold her up. Slow motion, she carries him down. We're playing and singing our song, but the singers fall silent in shock, all looking at me. What to do? Better to stop or keep playing? 
As I ponder, I tap the notes softly, at least to the end of the verse. I can't sing, I'm not even breathing. Oh, thank God, the woman gets up. She wants to go back to her pew. Do not call 911, she insists. And the mass goes on. But what are the guidelines for this? Nowhere in all the instructions does it say what the choir should do if an old lady faints at communion. Thank God we weren't singing Ale, Ale, Alleluia. If this was the end, and it could be, should we hastily switch to the song of farewell? Actually, the uh, parish people had a meeting and decided what to do after that. And the uh, ruling was you, you go on. They go down, you keep going. Seems a little harsh, but that's what they decided. What are we doing? Okay. A vision. I miss a note in the Gloria when he enters looking almost normal. His wild white hair clean for once, a tight gray blazer buttoned over his t-shirt and dirty jeans. His blue eyes nearly focused as he slides into the second pew. Is he really Catholic after all? His neighbor, bearded and disabled, edges away and faces left toward the lily-covered altar, toward father and the altar boys, as I focus on my song again zipping through the familiar notes, the choir not quite on pitch. When I look again, the man is gone. <clears throat> Every now and then homeless people slip in just um, for warmth and coffee and donuts when it wasn't a pandemic. <clears throat> and they don't get the warm welcome they should if we're Christians. But anyway. Disharmony. Here I sit at the piano up front, only the priest between God and me. Three of the six old ladies, my age, are singing different notes. My Lord, it's Babel in the choir loft. I keep pounding the note in the hope someone catches on and rides it to the pitch that God intended. Between measures, I point upward, making lifting motions with my hand, but nobody is looking. And suddenly I'm playing E flat instead of E, and now I don't know what verse we're on. My piano and I have joined the mess. Let me crawl under a squeaky pew and hide. After mass, some Catholics from Coeur d'Alene will praise our music, even our multi-noted warbling and my stumble-fingered chaos on the keys. I'll nod and thank them very much. But Lord, either they're deaf, or could it be it's even worse in Idaho? Oh, coming to the end, how are we doing here? Okay, Easter morning. As I raise my hands to lead the choir, the sun shines through stained glass. My fingers turn red, gold, and royal blue. A widow, I wear no rings and no tattoos, nor do I paint my nails, everything left a blank canvas for grief and hope. I often gaze at my ringless hands, remembering diamonds sparkling there feeling his fingers wrapped around mine. I wonder if another man will come with diamonds that will catch the light as I beat the rhythm and mouth the words. Or did God free my hands to play his songs, to dance on the piano keys, to shine in this multicolored glow? I feel him holding up my hands, little girl small in his embrace. These perfect hands are mine, he says. As the hymn resolves in a great amen, my fingers closing off the final note, the sun moves on, the colors fade. Skin still warm, I kneel and pray, palm against palm, fingers intertwined, fitting perfectly with nothing in the way. And the last one. And this guy is not my new boyfriend. It's just a, a friend. <laughs> While the 1030 choir waits. He says it as I get my tea in the hall between masses. Hello, Sue, loud from his table near the donuts. Hello, Joe, I respond, seeking mint or raspberry bags, filling my Jack Daniels mug with steaming water from the pot. Same stretched out gray suit, oversized honker, beady eyes, 85 or 13 kids, he's widowed now like me. I never have much time, the second choir coming in, but the maple bars are calling and I've been up since 6 a.m. Ah, I couldn't resist, he says, as I take the vacant seat. 
You know, when I was a kid, and he's off on another tail, I'm shoving the donut in, burning my lips on the tea, but smiling and nodding as I steal this moment of company. 9.45. I have to go, sticky napkin in my hand. Joe nods. See you later, Sue. See you later, Joe. Thank you. Oh, that was wonderful, Sue. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that. I, I absolutely love your sense of humor and I, I enjoy the way you add a touch of lightness into your poems while you're tackling some pretty serious subject matter. And uh, you aren't afraid to be vulnerable as well. And this collection I think is just uh, so honest and so human. And I uh, really, really enjoyed reading it the very first time I read it and I never get tired of these poems. So, so thanks for sharing these with us tonight. Well, thank you for publishing it and for the gorgeous cover that I just adore. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. It's a fun book to work on.